Well, the patron saint of runaway global warming is concerned about the glacial pace of the rest of the planet. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this is your uh, Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com and our friends over at the Patriot Posts. Uh, gentlemen, you all know St. Greta, uh, Greta uh, Thunberg, the young Swedish woman who stood up in front of the United Nations and said, I think it was something along the lines of, how dare you? Um, well, she's continuing to her, her climate activism, and she's running into a bit of a disappointment. Now, the Internet is occasionally a source of tremendous stupidity and vulgarity and so on, but often great uh, uh, wisdom as well. So the person that the Internet has uh, designated as Scoldilocks has decided <laughs> that nothing is happening quickly enough, that all of the w warnings and all of the bells and that she rang back several months ago when she got to the United Nations and told them we only had seconds, yay, yeah, seconds left to, to, to stop this uh, catastrophe. And nothing seems to have changed. I don't want to make this about um, climate. I don't even really want to make it about Greta so much, guys, as I want to make it about this, th this dynamic that is is it's it's just got to be one of these eternals of human nature. Greta is basically saying that even though I and several of my friends stood up in front of the United Nations six months ago, nothing of any substance has happened in terms of eliminating this this runaway climate change, and she's quite shocked by this. And I think Steve that this is a great example of what I've described as. As somebody who is who, who is too young to, they have not lived long enough to have the stupid beaten out of them yet, and and I really do think that's how life functions. It is it is absolutely true that every generation of seventeen year olds is utterly convinced that they are the first person to discover the problem. They're the first the first generation to discover the problem. First generation to. Um, to, to be concerned about the problem and the first generation that's going to actually do something about the problem. And, and even though their uh, adults tell them we felt that way too, they don't believe it. That's the fourth part of the equation. Now you guys, you guys weren't serious. Uh, what do you say to a 17 year old who is, who is shocked, shocked at the fact that despite her persistent warnings, nothing has seemed to actually happen yet. Welcome to the real world, honey. There you go. Yeah, uh, I want to. I, wanna, I do want to talk about the the more general, broader argument. But uh, first, I'd like to say a little something about uh, Greta herself, Scoldilocks. I love that. I can't believe as much yeah, as, as deep as I swim in the meme pool at work every day. Whoever I, came up with it, they they won the internet for the day. Absolutely, they, they really did. That's brilliant. Uh, she is a useful tool for the left. They like to have their their scolding youths to to get the to try and snap the rest of us into uh, into political shape. But you know, tools have to be forged. And when she first came to our notice back, in, I think September of last year, I did a little research on her. I'll just read you what I what I wrote then. Uh, the Swedish teenager is not some science prodigy who graduated young from an Ivy League school with an advanced degree in physics or anything like that. Rather, <laughs> she's the daughter and granddaughter of famous actors and opera singers who suffers from Asperger's syndrome, obsessive compulsive disorder, and selective mutism. I'm no medical professional, but these things might have been brought on when, according to public sources, starting at the age of eight, Thunberg was subjected to such a barrage of climate panic that she eventually became depressed and lethargic and also developed an eating disorder. So it's child abuse. It, oh, it's absolutely child abuse. Uh, this this is how the left forges their tools. And this uh, that paragraph I just read you from the article I wrote, I headlined, it's disgusting what the left is doing to Greta Thunberg. And it, it absolutely That's is right. disgusting. The poor young woman is a victim. Bill, on the backstage, you said she looked like she was, the 16-year-old looked like she was in her 40s, but that's only in her eyes. The rest of yeah, her eyes. The, best, the rest of her body is so stunted from her eating disorder that other than her eyes, she looks like she's maybe 12. And it's, it's as I said, it's it's just disgusting what they've done to this poor kid. That said, uh, uh, the whole climate change thing, I mean, of course, the climate's changing. It's always changing. We've got a sun that's variable. The continents shift around. Everything's changing. But if you go back and you look at the actual numbers, the uh, the Roman warm Roman warm period was actually quite a bit warmer than it is today. Our temperatures are fairly stable. Uh, we've we've endured much wilder swings than this. And the Roman warm period was one of the heights of Western civilization. They could bring in enough crops from uh, from Tunis and from Egypt to feed a city of a million people. This was unheard of 
uh, anywhere else in the world at the time, and we can thank the fact that the uh, that the world was somewhat warmer than it is today. So this is this is a great hoax. It's a great way to gain money and political power. And if uh, you know what, I'm just reminded of this is going to seem off key, and I'm sorry, I'm going to go on way too long here, but this is important. I don't know if you guys ever re- uh, watched The Sopranos, but there was a great joke, and this goes right to the case of Greta and how she's being used. And the joke goes like this, it's probably an old joke. There are two bulls at the top of a hill, an old bull and a young bull. And there are a bunch of cows down in the field below the hill. And the young cow, or the young steer says to the old steer, hey, why don't we run down the hill and screw one of those cows? And the old steer says, we could walk down and screw them all. And that's the thing, Greta's in such a rush that she's gonna ruin this gravy train if she were to actually get her way. Scott, uh, I'm really interested mostly in the in this idea that youth is incapable of learning that it is not unique. And I'm not putting this on her. When I was in college, uh, I think in my sophomore year at the University of Florida, a bunch of guys got together and decided we're going to put out a, a comedy newspaper called The Ape. And as I recall, my contribution at this fevered meeting was to say we should all wear like black wayfarers and bow ties or something so that like people be able to identify us. And then, of course, this this particular magazine would be able to get all kinds of advanced ideas into the thing, would take off big, go national. And at this point, the world would be begin to change and, and, and quickly too. Well, the newspaper didn't ask, didn't last the, the week. I mean, it was already by the time we got to the next meeting, there were schisms and factions and, you know, you know and, and the People's Front of Judea went that way and the, you know, and the <laughs> Judean <laughs> People's Front went the other way. Yeah. Uh, but this is how, this is how the world works. And, and I think, I think that there's something very odd about and and dangerous about the left constantly trotting out young people as if somehow they have wisdom this is essentially one of the one of the founding principles really of progressivism is the idea that people are born absolutely wise they're born absolutely good that they're that, that this whole noble savage kind of rousseau kind of thing that people are are that one of the as evan say points out one of the biggest uh, books on the left is sells millions of copies every year is everything I needed to learn. I learned in kindergarten. They actually believe this, you know, but anybody who's ever uh, been around children, actual children (laughs) knows that at a certain age, they are, they are just the only thing they can do naturally is lie with proficiency. Uh, And, and we feel that, no, you have to build the character it not, not stop it from being destroyed. Um, What do you think about this? Steve talked about the child abuse angle of of parading young people around. But what do you think just in general, Scott, about this idea that only the young are pure enough in heart to be able to to point out the real problems and and speak to them in a way that we uh, cynical adults have have had uh, leached away from us? Actually, what I think about it is that I'm sad that so many of us who are older have lost the idea that we might have something to say or that we might have something to do or that there might be a calling for us or that we might have some crazy idealistic notions that we're willing to go out there and fight for. Um, I, uh, sp- I'm i not dealing specifically with the issue of this individual person and her campaign. Uh, really, uh, I think it's, it's a challenge to be able to foster a next generation of, uh, for want of a better term, revolutionaries. And I mean that in the best sense of the term, the James Madison kind of revolutionaries. Um, it, without crushing their spirits, um, to to help to channel them in not not to uh, to mold them into our view of how things always should be, but to channel them in a direction that encourages them to explore. Uh, I have a lot of conversations uh, often with young people with whom I vigorously disagree. And and I'm thinking as they're talking, well, they just don't know what they're talking about. They haven't lived long enough. Um, you know, and, and that kind of thing going through my head. But at the same time, I hear this voice inside me that says, don't crush them. You know, don't mm-hmm. destroy this spirit. And so what I'll typically say is keep asking questions, keep an open mind, keep exploring, keep seeking. 
you know, don't let it stop here and don't don't anchor yourself too early in uh, in a view of the world around you that is uh, so concrete that you'll never be able to change it and then you're going to live and die on whether you were an adequate representative for that viewpoint. But, but keep that passion for exploration and discovery um, because every great thing that's ever happened uh, in this world has been because there were people who are willing to ask uncomfortable questions. There were people who were willing to go to the place where uh, common knowledge and the the mainstream narrative wouldn't go, and so like I, I want I want to see that I want to encourage that I want to channel them in that direction, um, and then I would say specifically to people like Greta, uh, you know, don't let the forces what she thinks of as revolutionary people, these climate change people, don't let these forces of stasis uh, channel you. Don't let them control you. And, and that's that's my concern about her specifically, is she's being used by a movement that has not been any different now than it is was 50 years ago. They're still doing the same thing with the same techniques and just they, they put different words on it. Um, to young people, I, I, I want to say, you know, we never know what can't be done until we don't do it. And when you get to that point in your life where you've said, you know what, this is just... This is just how the world is. There's nothing I can do about that. Then I think a little bit of you dies. Um, I, I think there's a way to say to a young person, you don't know everything yet, but man, I'm excited about what you might find out. Yeah. Keep at it. Keep the fire burning. Um, it's okay if you make some mistakes. It's okay if you look ridiculous every once in a while. It's okay even if you're wrong for a while because eventually that kind of spirit will lead you in the direction of truth and light. Well said. Um, yeah. and, and that certainly helped me clarify my final remarks here. Uh, I know on the surface it looks like I'm, I'm uh, making fun of Greta or attacking her, but that's certainly not my intention. I feel sorry for her in terms of how she was terrified into this position by, by manipulative parents who cared nothing about her well-being, even if it were true. There's a lot of things like murders and so on going on in, in, in the city I live in, but I don't spend eight hours a day telling, uh, you know, nine-year-old kids about all the murders that are going on and they're going to happen to you any time now. This is just, it's just child abuse. Your entire purpose as a parent is to protect children from the realities of life until they become emotionally mature enough and tough enough to be able to face them. That's, I, I have nothing against Greta and I have nothing against youthful idealism either. On the contrary, I agree with Scott completely. It's essential. It steers society, but it does it in a very slow kind of way. Um, what I have a problem with here, and the reason I keep coming back to this story, is this idea that a person who is so naive that she's actually shocked that the world has not changed course in the five months since she made a speech is somehow held up as a paragon of wisdom. Like somehow this is somebody whose, whose wisdom is so profound that we should listen to them. The left's fascination with, with children as being wise is an indication, I think, of where their, of where their entire moral code lies. And that is we want to be able to do whatever we want to all the time and have it be okay. Okay. That's a political position, but there are people who know better than Greta, who are putting her into this situation. And those are the people that I'm interested in, in, in uh, talking about and, and confronting. I'm interested in confronting the people that have manipulated her personally, but I'm much more interested in people who are trying to sell the idea that, that the younger you are, the wiser you are. I don't know if we're the first society in history. I know from what I read of history, we, we're one of the first societies in history to worship young people as sources of wisdom rather than old people as sources of wisdom. Virtually every other society in human history has had enormous respect for their elders. And the person who made the decisions for the tribe was the guy who had lived the longest, been in the most battles, seen the most compromise, sweated the most, cried the most, laughed the most. That guy was the guy who made decisions. This entire episode, is is designed to to point out that by the fact that she is so surprised at 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 what didn't happen that is a sign of her naivete and that naivete ex, ex, uh, expands not just across her but across entire generation of every generation of people who are 17 years old the entire reason you're 17 is so you can believe in stupid things that's what 17 <laughs> is built for guilty but but we really do need to have a look at this idea that 
that youth is the, is the font of wisdom, when it is clearly not. If you had told me this as a young person, I would have said, well, you're just a cynical, bitter old man, and you don't know we're going to be different. And I would have said to my younger self, that's what you think, and that's what I thought, but you will eventually get old enough to realize that that's not the case. And when young people start to do it, you will tell them the same thing that happened to you, and we'll go through this cycle again and again and again. Which leads me to my final conclusion, and that is, is simply this. When you're 17, you want things to happen fast. You want them to happen now. You're filled with energy. You think you're, you're finally free of your parents. You're doing your own laundry once every three or four months. And, and, and so you're, you're on fire. That's fine. But what I have learned over time and, and through, uh, through living through a lot of pain is simply this. It's good that things change slowly. And the reason it's good that things change slowly is because there are many, many, many bad ideas that are immensely appealing and, and the desire to follow them over a cliff is why things change slowly. It is, it is a good thing to slow down, consider these things. And, and of all the crimes against this current generation, which are legion on the part of the left, uh, this idea that the clock is ticking on their existence is, is simply the most appalling and, and forget even honorless. It is the most heartless thing I see in society today. The fact that people would be willing to terrify terrify, not just young people, but mostly young people, in exchange for political power, I just wouldn't do anything like that. Would you? That'll do it for this edition of Right Angle, made possible by our friends at Patriot Post, the paying members of BillWhittle.com. And if you want to hear conversations like this, and if you're sure you've got a better answer, you get to tell us live. You can join us at uh, BillWhittleCruise.com. We'll see you out on the open ocean in the middle of May. Uh, and until next week, uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Right Angle. 